The easiest way to start graphing absolute value equations is just to make an xy table. All we need to do is pick values for x and see what happens when we perform the computations on x to get y, see what number we get for y. So if we start by picking, say, negative 2. If we plug negative 2 in for x, then we get the absolute value of negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3, so the absolute value of negative 3 would be 3. So that means that when x is negative 2, y is 3. If we choose, say, 0 for x, we get 0 minus 1, that's negative 1, and the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. What about when x is 2? If x is 2, we get 2 minus 1, that's 1, and the absolute value of 1 is 1. So when x is positive 2, y is 1 again. And what about when x is 1? If x is 1, we get 1 minus 1, that's 0, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. So when x is 1, y is 0. And that looks like it might be a turnaround point here. We'll take a look at that when we get to the graph. And let's try one more. Let's try um, x is, well, I don't know, 3. If x is 3, we get 3 minus 1, that's 2, and the absolute value of 2 is 2. So when x is 3, y is 2. Now if we take these points and we graph them, ta-da, here's a bunch of points graphed. We can see that the points here form sort of a V-shape. Here's that one point we found where x is 1 and y is 0. Let me see if I can get a better color for being on white. When x is 1, y is 0. So that's our, our like I said, our, kind of our turnaround point here. When x was 0, no left to right, y was 1. And when x was 2, y was also 1. So these absolute value equations, when they graph, form this characteristic V shape with one point that represents the vertex or the turnaround point and then straight lines on either side. Here we have another absolute value equation. y equals the absolute value of x plus 5. We'll solve it similar to the way we did last time, only now we're going to kind of do a little bit of educated guessing. We know that last time when we had the absolute value of 0, we got the point where y turned around. So let's see if we can find that first. Obviously, if we need this to be 0 inside, and we're adding 5 to something, then we should make x negative 5. Then we'd have the absolute value of negative 5 plus 5, or the absolute value of 0, which is 0. So when x is negative 5, y is 0. Then let's pick one number that's a little smaller than that. Let's say negative 7. When x is negative 7, we get negative 7 plus 5, that's negative 2 and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And then one that's a little bigger than negative 5, let's say negative 3. When x is negative 3, we get negative 3 plus 5, that's also 2. So now we should have our turnaround point and one number on either side. So let's graph those things. Yep, sure enough. So here we have x is negative 5 and y is 0 and that was our turnaround point. And then x is, there's an example where x was negative 8, so y was 3. And here's one when x is negative 2, y is also 3. And our two points were negative 7 and 2, and negative 3 and 2. So we can see that it forms again that characteristic V shape, so we have it correct.